Hey everybody, I know it's been about two weeks since I last uploaded, so I figured I would come on and just give a monthly recap, show kind of my last two weeks, be transparent, talk about some things, some struggles that I've gone through recently, and then go over one trade. I had some questions on the trade on WHLM, and I just wanted to quickly talk about kind of my thought process behind it and the setup that I would consider it. So. 74k on the month, uh, best month ever. Pretty great, obviously. I mean, what else can I really say about it? It's just pretty crazy. And then let's just take a look at a month I didn't really make any videos on. We got 10.5, and then we're gonna go ahead, or sorry, a week last week. And then we're gonna look at the week that just happened, 4.5k. Um, so you can see that I kind of went on a mental decline when you when you go from a thirty eight thousand dollar week um, to a ten point five k week, and then the next week after that, uh, four point five k. Um, this is just a mentality decline. Um, I think that it started. On the 10.5k week, it started the the feeling of being burnt out, kind of not completely being there, completely being focused um, on my trading and wanting to be there and being appreciative, just appreciating the fact that I do this as my job. Um, it started to decline, and I do go through these cycles where I'll kind of I'll go through uh, some low periods mentally and. You know, it happens. It happens to a lot of people. So, um, I think this week was kind of the, it came to a point where I was at the lowest feeling and just was really over it. It was really burnt out. Um, but, you know, my philosophy has always been show up every day and um, just keep at it because consistency just showing up, getting in the experience, even through the hard times, um, kind of molds me, builds me into the trader that I am. Um, it's debatable. You know, maybe taking a break for a few days is the way to go. But I'm stubborn, and I don't like taking breaks. So it is what it is. You know, I got through the tough period, and I can already tell that through just self-reflecting and kind of realizing everything and thinking about it I've really feel a lot better and I'm in a much more positive headspace um, so we'll see how it goes you know next week you know it's funny because being in a positive headspace and trading for me I mean it really honestly it's just not giving a shit like next week I don't care how much money I make I don't even care if I make a trade it's just I'm gonna show up and do my best and that's always been the best mindset for me um, actually not caring at all uh, is the best mindset for me now that being said of course you have an established strategy you have discipline and rules and that's why you can kind of be laxed and not care um, because i am following a strict system this isn't just like oh i don't care i'm going to do whatever and hopefully i don't lose money uh, that's not what i'm talking about here it's more just trusting the process trusting your system and just trying your best and really not putting pressure on yourself uh, financially, you, you just can't. It affects performance. Um, and performance anxiety, I think, is what got to me. Um, you're looking at a 38K week, all of a sudden I'm getting anxious, like, oh, can I keep up with myself? Can I top that? Can I, uh, can I continue having this massive success? And all of a sudden you're just looking at pure performance anxiety. Um, there's nothing else to it. It's just that's exactly what it was. It was just performance anxiety and it got to me and um, I had worse results because of it. So look, I'm over it. It's fine. Life goes on. I, I've realized what happened and now I can move forward and go back to not caring and we'll just see what happens, right? So I'm in a better uh, headspace. Now we're going to look at WHLM. Now this stock went from 380 to 13, and then we have a pullback, and it pulls back to 450. 
with virtually no volume, I mean just very low volume levels. Um, and so logically, what, what can I say about this? Well, logically speaking, if you think of this like energy, if you think of it like a ball that's getting thrown back at the ground, think of it like an energy, um, it's, it's back at the ground. And for something that has been wild, the volatility of this ticker has been up, and that energy is just thrusted at the ground like this, well, I mean, logically speaking, it, you would expect it to be able to bounce a bit back up. Um, it's just a bounce setup. It's a multi-day setup where I would expect a bounce. Um, but what is the pattern called? I don't know. I mean, uh, does it really have a name? Does it really have an exact look? I don't know. I don't really think so. I just consider it logic. Um, Logically speaking, I would expect a bounce, so I look for a bounce. It's really that simple. Of course, it's not that simple. Uh, that wasn't the right thing to say, but... Look, uh, this setup, this multi-day setup, uh, it's just something that's very sold off. It had a big pop. It's very sold off. It's back to those uh, ground, those ground levels again, so you might look for a bounce. It can occur on any scale, any time frame, any type of stock. It can anything so really it's the setup is just being logical and and being open to expecting a bounce um, so so here's the multi-day a little better view of it get that huge squeeze to 1760 um, so I actually went a lot higher um, so I misspoke when I said 13 it actually went to 1750 and now it's back at 450. So I was looking for a bounce. And pre market gives me an even better hint um, because you see pre market prints and a gap up, which should have immediately uh, put it on some people's watch list. I know I put it on my watch list. Um, it was already on my watch list because of the multi day setup, but this just kind of further. Um, kind of further helped my thesis that this wants to find an upside when it washes back down to the 480 level that was a gift um, that was an absolute gift because I mean it's just it's just giving you a really nice entry now I didn't even play this that well because I took a 490 entry expecting a quick surge and it didn't give it to me and I cut it I actually cut it for like a very small loss I don't remember exactly but it was a very small loss maybe $20 loss and I saw it redevelop um, so it kinda holds the 480 level and then it you can see that it gets pushed out of this triangle or this horizontal area, this diagonal on the three minute. And so when it retests the whole dollar, I jump in, I get a 507 fill, and it, it just immediately, probably 20 seconds later, is when it really just exploded into a halt. Um, and then I just simply sold it out of the halt at 644 when it resumed. And so that was a very nice trade. It was a straight right here. We're looking at 500 shares at 508 out at 644. Um, very nice trade. Multi-day thesis. I got in. I got a very explosive quick pop and I locked in profits. Um, because a dollar thirty a share is pretty great, and I was happy with it. So that's an example of kind of how a multi-day thesis can come together, and within a split second, um, the entry happens and uh, the the exit happens. You know, just a few minutes later, and so a lot of people don't understand. Well, how do you catch these quick moves? You know, how do you get in right as it spikes? And, and lock in profits so fast and how do you even pull it off and I mean 
the answer is quite boring and everybody hears the answer from anybody who's successful it's just simply preparation just being prepared that's it you just have to be prepared and when you live and breathe trading you are always looking at charts you're always looking at how things are structured how they're developing how they're moving the different tickers the different reactions based on different things I mean you when you live and breathe this stuff um, you're preparing constantly and preparation doesn't always mean writing a bunch of stuff down or data tracking or any of this stuff sometimes preparation is just being around and watching the charts and uh, being able to bring up recent tickers in your mind that have been hot and just pull them up just type in the tickers right out of your mind right out of your memory and just pull up the charts and take a look right that's that's probably the simplest form of preparation that exists in trading and it really just comes down to if you live and breathe the stuff and if you do well, you have a much better chance of catching fast moves like this um, so well you know just wanted to give my take on the trade go through just be transparent with the profits because you know, a lot of people in the space maybe not a lot of people but there are people that uh, they don't believe that people can be successful in trading and um, believe me you can be successful you can definitely be successful in trading it's hard work but not everybody that uh, that has success is a fraud so just want to show and be transparent to kind of go against this idea that it's impossible because it's not it's very possible all right i'll see you guys on the next video if you liked it you can like and subscribe See ya.